Hey everybody, it's Jake here from Smith Guitar School, uh, and today we're going to be starting a new series here on the channel. This is checking out um, each one of the amplifier models in the HX Stomp and in the Helix. Um, it should be uh, the same uh, amp models in both the Helix and the HX Stomp, so this will work for either interface, whichever one you happen to, um, to have or, or maybe be considering purchasing. Um, and we're going to go in no particular order here. Um, I thought it might be fun to start with some of the ones that I just don't hear about quite as much or that aren't, um, aren't demoed quite as often online. And so for today, for the first um, episode in our series here, we're going to be taking a look at the Voltage Queen. Now, the Voltage Queen is based off of, let me make sure I get this right, uh, Victoria Vintage Queen. Um, so it's a, excuse me, a small um, vintage tube amp um, type of a thing, kind of like a um, like an old tweed type of amp, at least from the uh, the appearance of it anyway, not necessarily from a tonal perspective. And um, it's actually grouped together with the other um, tweed amps. If you take a look at um, at the amplifier list here, you see we have Voltage Queen, the Tweed Blues, which is a, um, a baseman. Um, we've got your different champs, things like that here too. So a similar type of amp. And it's got some neat controls. We've got two different drive controls, just a basic tone control here. Uh, and then a bass and treble, channel volume, master, sag, hum, ripple, bias, and bias X. Um, we'll go through each one of those controls and how some of them affect each other here in just a couple minutes. Um, first thing I want to just run through is what I've got going on up here at the top. So I just set up kind of a basic preset for us to use here today. Um, I've got no, um, no noise gain on here at the beginning. I didn't really find that I needed it for this amp. Um, I have a compressor here that we can kick on. It's off at the moment. Um, just a, a really simple uh, boost pedal as an overdrive. We've got a fuzz just to see how that sounds through the amp. And here's our amp here. Uh, I've got a delay which we'll switch on and off uh, as needed. And we have a, just a simple chamber reverb. And then at the very end, we've got our, our matching cabinet. Now, um, the send effect here, or the send here, um, I, uh, I set this up with all of my um, HX Stomp presets. Um, the way that I have my, um, my interface set up at the moment is that um, I have a send out which goes into an external power amp and that goes to a speaker so that if I'm on stage I can run my own small guitar cab while still sending the um, the main signal out to front of house. So um, have, I have them all set up that way at the moment, uh, but who knows, that could change pretty soon. <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, this is just how the Voltage Queen opens up. I mean, you just you know you drop it in uh, from the uh, select menu and this is the default setting. So I'm gonna start on the uh, my bridge pickup. I'm using a, um, a Strandberg, a Bowden Stout, Bowden standard, by the way. So uh, I've got humbuckers here. Um, I have a, a single coil option and then a couple of, um, you know, um, dual coils, uh, one from each pickup that we'll take a listen to as well. It gets a really nice clean tones out of this thing. But we'll start with the old uh, bridge humbucker. <laughs> Okay, so pretty decent bite on there right out of the gate. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is see if we can get a nice clean tone out of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop the drive one and two down and I'm gonna switch so, we... yeah, I got like no volume at that point either, so. Yep, really nothing at that point. So uh, I'm gonna try to bring this. bring these up until I get a little something a little bit there and then I'll boost the channel and the master volume here right. pretty clean and that's still with the humbucker if I switch over to the single coil a little bit of a wimpy sound at that at that stage um, but, um, but definitely clean. So if we bring this up a little bit further, I'll try just the top one here. Uh, still on the uh, single coil. Yeah, so even with the single coil at that point, we're getting some pre uh, pretty decent amounts of drive. Go back to the humbucker. Really cool. I love that for a nice rhythm guitar type sound. Uh, I'm going to kill the delay just for the moment. I'll bring this um, second drive up and we'll see what we get. Cool. And uh, so now, just for fun, we'll crank both of them all the way up and see what we get. 
cool. Volume's not um, too crazy loud at that stage either, so. Really cool. It's a neat sound. Uh, I like that a lot. It's got a, a really nice um, kind of a compressed feeling to it underneath. Really kind of um, feels like a tube amp kind of caving in on itself. Um, very cool. So now while these are in that position, um, I'll use this moment to demonstrate a couple of these other um, controls down the bottom here. And let's start off with the with the SAG control. So the SAG control works really closely with uh, the master control, and, um, and on this amp anyway, it really feels like the, the uh, drive one and two controls as well. And that's going to control how much of that kind of like caving in on itself, really compressed feeling you get. So um, I'll go ahead and turn that all the way down for the moment. And I think the sound's probably not crazy different. But to me, there's a little bit more compression at that stage there. Uh, I'll go ahead and bump this all the way up. And we get, and you can really, you can feel at that point. It feels like I'm playing through a compressor. Like it, the, it feels like the amp is compressing as soon as I'm starting to hit there. All right, same thing with it all the way down. Yeah, so with the sag all the way down, it really it feels a lot more immediate. It feels like there's no no compression. Um, so cool. So I don't know how much of that's coming through to you guys. I'll have to have a listen to it when we when I um, when I listen to this in post. Um, but I can definitely uh, for for me anyway, it's a little bit more of a feel thing, and I think you can hear a little bit of the compression on the front edge of the note there. So I'll just kind of leave it right around the middle for the moment, and let's take a look at the hum control. So um, the hum control is supposed to simulate heater hum. So, um, all the way down, pretty nice and quiet. And to me, like, I don't even hear anything. I don't hear anything at all until about eight. I can start to hear a little bit. And right about there, I can really start to hear it. And there you go. So if we go and kind of play around with I think this is a really neat kind of feature here. So obviously you've got that, you know, kind of annoying hum there. Um, what would be annoying if it was coming through a tube amp. So, but you're getting this really neat kind of effect on the guitar. It almost reminds me of like an octave fuzz. <laughs> And that's all coming from that hum control. I'll go ahead and take it all the way down. Right, it's like my guitar's got like a little, a little, um, then every note has like a little friend that's going along with it. Really cool. Uh, I'll, I'll back it up just a little bit. So that hum is mostly gone. But you can hear a little bit of that extra kind of thump um, going along with the uh, with the guitar note. So there we go. So there's our hum control. I'll put that right in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's take a look at the ripple control. Um, this um, is simulating adding AC ripple into the sound. So let's start off with it all the way down. And then all the way. Come on. There we go.
Don't really hear a huge difference at that point. Um, but let's see what happens if we bring the hum back up a little bit. <laughs> And then we bring the ripple in. Alright, so same deal. I'm not really hearing a huge difference um, with that particular effect. So. And we'll just kind of pop it in the middle for now. So, um, so the bias is controls the um, the bias, the amplifier. So we have a colder bias on this side. And a hotter bias over here. And that just has to do with how much power would be being fed to the tubes. You can hear a slight level drop as you get to the higher, uh, the um, hotter biases. Here's your cold and your hot bias. Okay. And the bias X. All right, so um, these last three controls in, in particular are all pretty subtle. Um, the bias can have a pretty stark effect if, depending on where you have it set, if you have it you know, on one of the extremes. But for the most part, these last three are pretty subtle. Um, the hum is really subtle until you get it way up here around you know, around eight or nine or so. Uh, but then all the other controls are, um, are just about what you'd expect. So let's, um, let's take a look at a couple of the other ones here. So we'll go um, maybe back the drive off a little. <laughs> And we'll bring this up a little bit. Maybe just back down just a hair on these two here. There we go. That makes my mixer a little bit happier. Um, and let's check out the tone control all the way down. And all the way up. Right, pretty much what you'd expect. Pretty subtle difference. All right. Bass control all the way down. I like that actually. That's really cool. It feels like it might um, sit into a track really, really nicely actually. I'll see what happens if we crank the bass up. Yeah, not like a crazy amount of bass on tap there. Cool. So definitely um, pretty usable throughout the whole range of the bass control there, which is kind of neat. Usually when you get way up here with the bass, a lot of times it get, just gets flubby and, and unusable. But at this at this point, even with the way up here, that's pretty pleasant to just kind of um, be in the room with playing solo. If I was playing with a group, you know, probably back it way off. But um, but yeah, really nice usable bass control. Trouble control. See, I like that too. So even when you turn it all the way down, it doesn't get like just completely muddy and unusable. That's awesome. Bringing in the high, um, the high frequencies there really kind of um, makes the top end of the drive. Um, really, really sparkle. It's really nice, especially for some um, some nice rhythm parts like that. Kind of makes the upper part of the chord um, sparkle a little bit. Um, really cool. Yeah, I like that one a lot. So, um, so there it is, guys. That's the those are the basic controls on the amp. Now, um, I'll add a little bit here uh, with a couple of um, 
of pedals. So I'll run it with a little compressor on here first. Uh, the compressor is set up pretty simple, um, just a very slight level boost to compensate for the um, for the compression. I'll even back that off a little bit more. Um, you know, middle of the road kind of ratio. <laughs> No compressor. And with the compressor. It's pretty nice. Um, I can drop the mix down a little bit of the compressor too. Um, let's take a look at the, um, the boost pedal here. So again, nothing going on, just just the amp. And the first thing that I hear is I probably want to drop some of the um, some of the bass out even a little bit more here. Right, so. So what I might do, because um, again, to me, that still feels really bass heavy. I might go over to this guy here. Um, let's go ahead and drop some of that drive down a little bit. I don't think we need quite that much. Um, same with the bass here as well. So um, so this, of course, is a um, is a model of a um, Dallas Range Master. It's a treble booster. So here it is without it. That sounds pretty good already. And then with it. That sounds really cool to me. I like that a lot. So let me bring this back up, bring it a little bit more drive, again, without it. Yeah, to me that works a little bit better than the, um, than the exotic boost over here. Um, but why don't we just also try it out with a clon just to see what we get. So here it is uh, one more time without. And with it on. So I think that's kind of cool. Both with the um, the treble booster and the clon, you can really hear those, um, those mid frequencies coming through. You get a little bit of that nasally kind of a feel to it, um, which is great. That's exactly what those pedals are supposed to do. If you're playing in a mix, um, you know, with a, you know, keyboard player, whole drum set bass guitar whatever um those mid frequencies are what's going to help you to cut through so so really uh really cool how well it reacts with those particular overdrive pedals uh we'll do one uh just kind of crazy one just in case you guys are interested um let's do a um do a horizon drive so, works pretty well too actually <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. Um, and then uh, we'll do a little King It's Home. Cool. So reacts really nicely to the overdrive pedals, especially with the gain. Uh, again, the gain here at about six and a half on each one of these um, two drives. Um, one other thing we can check, by the way, is um, we can turn one of these gains way up and then turn the other one down. We'll see if we get any kind of a different sound out of that. And we'll do the same thing here. Maybe a slightly different EQ on the two different drives. Let's try that one more time. All right, and lastly, we'll just check out some fuzz here. Um, we'll start with a um, uh, fuzz face. No 
Okay. Cool. Uh, we'll do the same thing with a um, with Big Muff. <laughs> Okay, if I was going to do one of those, I might maybe turn this game down slightly. Yeah, pretty much what you'd expect. Works pretty nicely with it. Uh, and one other thing we can try here is an octave fuzz. Now, I thought it might be kind of cool. Check it out like this first. Um... And then I thought it might be kind of cool to check that same thing out with that hum way up here. So just a reminder, here's what it's like without the uh, drive on. Oop. Let me turn this back up. There we go. friend going along with each one of the notes there. We can even bump that up slightly. There we go. And then if we kick on the um, octave fuzz, a lot of noise. There you go, guys. Um, so that's the uh, the Voltage Queen. So I, um, you can, of course, experiment with different cabinets and stuff, too. Um, I'd love to just sit here and run through all the cabs and all the microphone options and all that, but we'd, we'd never finish this video. So, um, so far, you've been hearing it through a 112 Deluxe um, type of cab, something that would normally go with um, something like a Fender Deluxe. Uh, I've got a, a 160 ribbon microphone on it. Um, these, there's all kinds of really cool things you can do here, too. Um, you know... <laughs> Swap out the different mics for like a 57. Obviously, much brighter kind of a sound, different types of dynamics. You got different ribbon microphones here as well, condensers. Um, and here's like a, a 112, uh, 121, excuse me. You hear a lot more like low end on that. I find the 160 is kind of a nice mix between the the really trebliness of the um, upper mid range of the 57 and the really warm tones of the. 121. So it's one of my personal favorites, but there's also some really great condenser microphones here, um, like the uh, the 87. So lots of really cool options there that you can mess around with. Uh, of course, there's more overdrives, fuzzes, um, boosts, and things like that you can you can work with. But um, but for now. Um, that's going to be it for today. And, uh, so come back real soon. We'll have a, another video up and running for you, um, within the next few days. See you soon.